Hello everyone and welcome to this final video of the series on how to build the ultimate modern SharePoint Online intranet. So let me go in the other view with uh, Seb who needs no more introduction by this point. You've seen <laughs> him. If you followed along all videos, this is the, at least the 12th time <laughs> I would have to introduce him. But even if we're kind of done with the actual content. We wanted to take some time to share some of the important tips and tricks because an intranet is never over. You have iterations, you have phases, but an intranet is never over. So we wanted to share with you some final resources that you should check out and a few other tips and tricks to keep up to date with Microsoft 365. So I think we're going to start with the tools, right, Seb? Yep, absolutely. Um, if you'd like to kind of we discuss a little bit about how much an intranet can be without um, a line of code and, and should be without a line of code, well, there might be also capabilities that you might want to bring um, that are a little bit outside the initial scope of SharePoint, like web parts or new extensions in there. And I think an amazing resource is to go with the, the modern SharePoint starter kit. The modern SharePoint starter kit is a full end-to-end -end showcase solution that allows you to get started with the modern experiences. So we have new web parts, we have new configuration. There's also a way to deploy a full internet as a script. So if you want to automate some of the pieces, you want to learn how um, MVPs and the community have been um, pushing for the best practices in this space, I really believe that a modern SharePoint starter kit is a great way to start. So you, you're going to need a little bit of technical chops. You're going to need to have, to do a little bit of PowerShell, maybe even get the code from the web part and play around to adapt the web parts to your own needs. Everything is open source, so everything can be modified, deployed to your tenant for free. There's no um, retribution. There's no nothing. It's just all, all for you. And the beauty, it's free. It's maintained by the community, but it's a great uh, kind of sandbox to start playing around like, and understand what are the kind of the art of the possible from a customization standpoint, I believe. And, and all of the samples there, you can actually either deploy the full thing or only download only a web part, for example. If there's one web part you like and you're like, that's what I want, you can only download that web part. And even if I think we really highlighted build your intranet with no code during this series, but code is not bad. We're not saying code is bad, but uh, we've seen, I think, too many places where any everything was done by code. Even if there was a good alternative out of the box, code for the sake of code is bad. Try exactly. to use as much out of the box as possible, but at the end of the day, SharePoint is still a platform you can build custom line of business applications on if it makes sense. So you have a huge community with the SharePoint framework. Uh, you can use the Microsoft Graph that I don't want to get Seb started because he can talk for hours on the Microsoft Graph. Uh, but yeah, it's, code is not bad, but don't, don't code just for the fun of coding when you can do it out of the box. Exactly. Think about an intranet as, a, as not a code first project. It should be a configuration, uh, power user. And then if you need to get specific skills or specific components that you want to bring in, then absolutely. Awesome. So what do we got next? I think the next one is something that we actually talked about before and even showed, right? Absolutely. Yes. So the SharePoint lookbook. The SharePoint lookbook is not only a super beautiful site that showcases really the art of the possible, but from a configuration standpoint. So different types of site, different um, uh, reasons why you would use a site, different configurations, different web parts, different colors, different themes. But it's also a an automated provisioning engine 
to allow you to experience the design that we're talking about in your real environment or even in a development environment. That means that you can get any of the sites that you see on this screen and even more inside your environment within what, three, four, five minutes. And then you can start really experiencing what SharePoint has to offer, how it's configured and everything. Some of the sites we use today, a good example is the tech lending that we use today. That beautiful site with all the components is coming from the SharePoint lookbook as a way to, for us, just speed up the, uh, the creation of an intranet. So 100% recommend this. It's amazing. And there's an, a really beautiful PDF uh, that is available, almost like a real lookbook, like a design lookbook, where you can really see, wow, SharePoint can be amazingly beautiful. What do you think, Vlad? Yeah, I, I I think when they launched it a few years ago, they even said they were inspired by like a they wanted to make like a fashion catalog yeah. for SharePoint. So I, I really think it's an amazing way to show, especially at the start of the project, show everybody in your team, hey, SharePoint can be beautiful. I can make a beautiful SharePoint start uh, site in 10 minutes and we can get started from something. Let me show you how cool it is. So it's definitely, every time I do a demo, this is where I start. So I definitely use this one a lot. It's important to know. Absolutely. Then we discussed a little bit earlier, the Fluent UI Theme Designer. I believe this is one of the most critical piece of software uh, to create theme and make your site beautiful. So we wanted to mention it again. Um, it's it it just makes you a designer without any designer skills, which is awesome, right? And I think one of my the coolest feature right now it says looks good. You see like the green highlighted bar, but it also has an accessibility checker. So it makes sure that the colors you choose will not cause any contrast issues for uh, people that have accessibility issues and need screen readers that, yeah. So I really think that having that built in as you design your team is really amazing. And it really, again, make sure that even if you're not a designer, you know nothing about the actual technical aspects of accessibility, it will tell you right away if it looks good or, hey, work on this because this is not good enough. Absolutely. And it's important because contrast is important. Um, there's there's a lot of it that makes a huge, huge difference. And even for, for, for me that has no visual uh, disability, when I look at a site that is not accessible from a uh, just a color palette standpoint, it just feels weird. It just not like, it doesn't feel how right. it should be. Yeah. It, it does not feel right. So here, you're always going to feel right when you're going to build your uh, your SharePoint site. Okay, next up, the design guidance. This is uh, this is just kind of a collection of guidance on how to brand your site, custom teams, navigation, columns they have. It's basically like a go-to page, which honestly it will link you to a bunch of other articles or places on docs.com, but I think having it all on a single site uh, really makes it, uh, it earned its spot in this list of resources because it's way cleaner than giving you 20 different docs.microsoft.com links. And it's it's been quite updated as well. So I was super Absolutely. happy about that. Absolutely. And it really kind of respects the life cycle of SharePoint. So if there's new capabilities, like for example, collapsible sections, don't overuse the collapsible sections, and here's why. And you're gonna find all of that information directly in the um, in this resource. It's beautiful, and I think any content author should have access to this uh, to this site. Everybody should have at least one read of this content to at least figure out what what are the gotchas and how to make a site really really well, making sure that the story is is the right one, making sure the content is the right one, and making sure that everything fits into uh, the SharePoint the SharePoint uh, uh, content framework we have there. Now I think I mentioned it. The 
it's never really over. <laughs> never. Even, even, even if this series of videos might be after this one, uh, your work on the internet is never over. And uh, Microsoft keeps releasing new stuff. It it just doesn't stop. And even for me, and I mean, it's my job to stay up to date, to help my customers stay up to date. And I'll be honest, it's a challenge sometimes because there's so much content. And even if my internet is SharePoint, they might release something new in Teams, which is cool for the internet. They might release a new feature in, I don't know, in Stream, which might impact the internet. So there's a lot of things going on. And it's, in a way, your job to keep up to date with the technology and enable and get the most out of those new features. So where can I, where can we go look to find content? There's so much resources for that, Vlad. It's quite, quite impressive. So first, I really think that from a governance standpoint, from a um, visibility on the, on the future of where we're going, Microsoft 365 roadmap is where you're going to see everything that will ship either in a week, in a month, sometime even in three months, you're going to see all of that right there. And you're going to be able to filter by technology you're looking into. It's, it's Microsoft 365 wide, right? So it's not just for SharePoint. It's any technology that lives in the Microsoft 365 umbrella. So there is a lot. And, and you can even subscribe to some of the feeds there and be literally spammed by the roadmap because there's <laughs> so much new capabilities, especially in the in this moment right now where we're approaching um, our um, annual event called Microsoft Inspire, uh, Inspire, Ignite. Microsoft Ignite, <laughs> Microsoft Ignite. Um, a lot of team are aiming to ship capabilities for Ignite. So you're going to see a lot of new action on the roadmap. And, and probably during the first day of Microsoft Ignite, there's going to be like 100 new features added that will be released in the future. That's what usually happens because those get published the day of. So people don't, don't know what's happening in advance. So I, Exactly. It, we keep our secrets sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's, that's really an official one. So definitely. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay, next up, what do we got, Seb? So we have the Microsoft Tech Community blog. So each product at Microsoft has a blog on the tech community. If you're not a member of the tech community, I highly encourage you to become one. Uh, it's free and you can get access to uh, PM, so program managers posting on behalf of their team to bring uh, new capabilities to your, uh, uh, to your attention. Uh, tips and tricks. There's even like community areas where people can ask questions and help each other. But here, this specific blog is the SharePoint blog. And this is where we, um, as Microsoft, we publish all the news um, around what's coming up, uh, the recaps of the last month, uh, some of the episodes of the different podcasts that exist in there. So all of what's new around Microsoft and, and SharePoint is posted at that URL. So I highly encourage you to go there. I think the last one you mentioned, the what's new in the last month, has been my favorite. I think Mark Cashman is the one that usually does them yeah. on the SharePoint and OneDrive side. It's the uh, SharePoint Roadmap Pit Stop series. And there's one every month with what happened. That has been my favorite one on the SharePoint blog. The Microsoft Teams blog also has one monthly that they released. And hey, this is what got released in the last month. So having those, and I always check them. Did I miss anything? Uh, is there everything there? And it's also a summary of resources of, hey, if you only have time to check one per month, that's the one you should go. Uh, that's <laughs> the one you should go check. Absolutely. And especially when we announce these things, they're usually early in their rollout. So either for um, targeted release users or tenants, or even you know, just a little bit before that, say that we are starting the rollout. So you're never late when you read these, these blog posts. You're not like late in the game. It's more like, okay, so it's coming so you can start planning for how you're gonna leverage that new capability in, in your digital workplace. Nothing can replace community events and conferences, even if Unfortunately, for the past year and a half, they have been online. 
uh, we're starting to get back in person. Just actually between the videos, we're just talking about a conference in uh, Vegas at the end of the year that I'm really excited to uh, go to. But uh, community events and conferences will always be at the, for me, at the core of learning and networking because I mean, I, I create content for a plural site, which I think is awesome. We're creating awesome content right here on YouTube for free, which is awesome. But uh, having a hundred experts in the same room that you're able to ask specific questions that apply to you, uh, going to like it went from Ignite to be back in person where uh, Microsoft sends thousands of PMs and people and they have like the biggest area of the sponsor hole <laughs> where you can go ask questions anytime. Nothing will ever uh, compete or uh, beat those community events and uh, third party, well, Microsoft and third party conferences. They're, they're just amazing. Absolutely. There's nothing better than going into like the lunch area where you can eat some conference food. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's less great. Uh, and, and sitting at a random table with random people and starting a conversation about what was your previous project? What are the challenges you see with technology today? Have a conversation about content types. There's nothing more, uh, you can get, you can enrich yourself with these content type discussions and, and all of that. And that's always great also to see familiar faces. Um, also, if you're um, following some uh, technology influencers, they're, they're going to be there and, and they're going to be super approachable, happy to answer any of your questions. So feel free. If you, you really want to live the technology to its core, I think going to a conference uh, or a community event is the best way to uh, fall in love with uh, technology. And that's I think that's how Vlad and myself really fell deeply in love with the SharePoint community through um, all the different events we've we've done in the past and and still today. No, definitely. Last one. There's there's help if you uh, there, there's a lot of MVPs who have a weekly, some of them monthly, but a lot of them also have weekly watch new videos, they kind of look at all of the things that happen in Microsoft 365 and they kind of summarize them into 30 minute videos. Some of them even do them live so you yep. can ask questions. And this can add a lot of value because at Microsoft MVPs, we have, we usually get to play with features before they're released, even in targeted release. So even if we cannot talk about them before the day Microsoft announces them, because we're under NDA, but the day Microsoft announces them, we've already broke it a few times. So we can kind of tell you like, hey, this is the blog post. This is what it can do. But here's some best practices. Even if it's, again, day one, it's still fresh. Uh, we can we can save you some hours of debugging because we probably broke it and went through problems before. And uh, there's a few I recommend. Uh, one of them is actually done by our mutual good friend, Daniel Glenn. Uh, his, his weekly is called the Message Center Show. I'll put a link in the description. But again, if you want to have kind of a mix of that, staying up to date while also listening to in a way, a live show and being able to ask questions, uh, going to those is really fun. And I always have some on my calendar. I do my best to attend as many as I can. And it's part of how I also stay up to date. Absolutely. And I think um, even if it says videos here, I think there's also a lot of new mediums, right? We, we discussed earlier about yeah. blog posts. There's podcasts today that are super, um, uh, super popular today. There's some a Microsoft run podcast. There are some community member run podcasts. There's sometimes a mix of both uh, run podcasts. Um, um, and, and I really think it's it's worth it to have a look or a listen to uh, uh, these show to, to, to stay grounded in the technology, especially the ones. And now I'm talking from a, like a, a Microsoft uh, side of the house. It's great to hear from our MVPs it, that are coming with an unbiased opinion on on some of the features uh, instead of being 
like we live and breathe Microsoft. And sometimes it's you, you think in a certain way and then the community kind of wakes you up or make you realize that there's maybe something you forgot. And it's great to hear from the MVPs that are like, um, especially the ones that are doing constructive uh, uh, opinions. Uh, but it, it's definitely great to hear the feedback to push us internally to make the product better. What we did today, um, walking through everything related to an intranet, is basically a mix of feedback that was sent that, that, that were sent sent since what 2015 2016 to different uh program managers product groups that have been listening to customers partners mvps community members to make the product better and i think what you've seen today is the result of that so by listening to um, these MVPs, these community members doing these podcast videos is a great experience for us. And, and that's why we, we love to highlight them in, in, um, in, in our different conferences, but also in, 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 in this format here. Awesome. Well, I think, Seb, that is all. I think we're done. It is all. And you know what, Vlad? It worked. Everything absolutely <laughs> worked. So it deserves this amazing piece of photography of us realizing I, that we, we did it. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the, uh, it actually worked face. <laughs> it did work. Uh, so thanks you, Vlad. A, a huge thank you for having me today. Um, it was awesome to walk through um, this uh, series of videos. It was great to connect with you again. Uh, it has been a while before, but also, um, I want to make sure that everybody is feel free to reach out to us on Twitter. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, use the comment section here on, on all the videos. We'll be more than happy to, uh, to help. But Vlad, thank you so much for hosting this. Well, th thank you very much for uh, doing another day with me, Seb. I know. Yeah, I, I still don't know why you quit doing workshops with me to to go at Microsoft, but uh, thank you for coming back. And it's been super fun and uh, super valuable for the community as well. And a huge thank you to everybody who watched all twelve videos until now. It's been. Uh, I don't know how much has actually been if we put all of them together. I'm not sure if we're under or over the half day that we usually had before we we had like schedule that we need to fit it on. Now it was more a bit of a like, we'll take the time it takes. So, but it was also no questions to take. So I'm not sure if we're going to be over or under what we had before, but I'll say thank you for watching the last three and a half hours, more or less of uh, more, yeah, probably more of uh, me and Seb talking in Trinex. We really hope this was valuable for you and you learned something. And make sure you follow Seb on Twitter. You have his uh, Twitter down there. I'll also put it in the description. Add him on LinkedIn. He's a uh, really nice guy. And uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see more awesome content. So Thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Bye. Cheers, everybody. Bye.